Hi everyone, it's Holly from Hand Printed here. Today I'm going to show you another project that you can do at home. Now if you're anything like me, you may have been working on lots of uh, creative things recently, testing out stuff, um, working on paper, you might have children who've done lots of drawings um, and you haven't really got anything to do with them. Uh, uh, so today I'm going to show you a really simplified, uh, quick way of creating a little booklet. You can make your own sketchbooks if you want to. Um, I've got a couple here that I've made, a little sketchbook um, for your uh, for your doodles. You can, uh, these are great for children if you want to go on little treasure hunts and little notebooks for them. And these are uh, these are really nice. So you can fill them with blank pages if you like, from scrap paper, recycled paper, whatever you have. Um, at home or you can use them to um, repurpose some prints so if you've got prints that didn't quite work out uh, right or you don't know what to do with them maybe you've got some test prints from something you did or some drawings that didn't really turn into anything you've just got a pile of it in a drawer somewhere in the back of a sketchbook this is the time to dig that out and you can you can do something with it so you're going to need to start off with a little wad of paper um, prints, plain paper, whatever you like to use. I've got a little one here that I've pre-cut. I've got um, some sketchbook paper that's plain, just some coloured paper that I had scrap. I've got some um, bits of misprints uh, for tests from when I was screen printing that didn't turn into anything when I was just testing out colours. I've also got some um, really nice bits of magazine paper that I just really like. Um, so gather bits together. You want to cut them all to the same size. I use this envelope as a template for my page. So I cut all my pieces twice the size of the envelope. Let's just get all that back together. Okay, so all my pages are twice the size of this envelope here. Um, so cut them all up. Normally you do them with a metal ruler and a scalpel to get nice clean edges, but I just used a pair of scissors. Just, I'm at home, I haven't got loads of equipment around, so just, just um, cut away with what you've got until you've got a little collection of things here. Next thing you want to do is put them all into a little booklet. So rather than having one on top of the other folded as you've been collecting them, you want to put them all one inside of each other like this so that you can flick through to make a little booklet. You want to choose something a little bit thicker if you can for your outer page. I have got here um, a cut up piece um, of painted paper. I just used watercolour to paint lots of green triangles on here um, a little while ago and I didn't know what to do with it because it was kind of just one of those doodles that you do to when you're feeling a bit creative but maybe stuck. Um, and so I decided to turn it into a book cover. I cut this pretty much the same size, but just a little bit longer so that you don't get all these pages sticking out. So just cut it a little bit longer so that all together you end up with a booklet with all your pages inside, like that. You don't want to go mad with the amount of pages because you're going to have to stitch them all together. Um, so keep it low at the, at the moment just to make these small booklets. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do is stitch them all together. Normally, um, when we're doing this, we would use an awl to stab the holes through all those spines. But we're doing a kind of quicker, easier project with things that you might have already around the house. Um, you might have one of these from us. We have these in the hand printed shop. We use them in the studio all the time. This is an etching needle, which is basically just a sharp tool used to scratch into etching plates, into dry point plates um for printmaking so you might have one of those in your printmaking kit already if you do grab it if you don't um just a sharp pencil will be fine for this you can always start off the holes with a scalpel and then work them through with a pencil that's absolutely fine just just something sharp and if you're doing this with children just be really careful um this is a bit that you might want to do yourself growing up might want to do okay so we want to make sure that the holes are in the same place in each of our pages. Ideally, we'd stab all the way through the whole booklet in one go 
with our awl to get a hole that's in the same place. But because we're using makeshift tools and things that we find around the house, we might not have something sharp enough and it can be tricky, you need to put quite a lot of weight in it. So what we're gonna do instead is make a little template. I have got a slip of paper that's the right width, so it's the same width as my booklet here. We want to get five holes in the centre of our booklet, so I'm just going to make a little template for where to put them. So fold your paper in half and mark a line in the centre where it folds. That's where one of our holes is going to go. I then want to put two more marks each side, reasonably evenly spaced if possible by dividing the other sides into thirds. So I've got five marks in the centre, reasonably evenly spaced all the way along. These are where my holes are going to go. I can then place this in the centre of my booklet and it's going to show me where to puncture all the holes in the spine of my book. So I'm going to start off by taking one of my pages, putting it down on a cutting board, and I'm just going to mark where those holes go. Okay, got them marked here. And then I'm going to take a bit of cardboard, just scrap cardboard, placing it down. And then I'm going to get my etching needle or your awl or your sharp pencil, and I'm just going to puncture through these holes. Okay, so I've got my holes all the way along. I'm then going to put the needle all the way through or use the pencil through a little bit further or maybe even just get a chopstick and wiggle it through just to widen those holes a bit. We want to make it as easy for ourselves as possible so we don't want those holes to be too tiny. So I'm just going to open them up a little bit and here we go. I've got five holes stabbed all along the spine of one of my pages. Now you want to do that for each of your pages. Depending on what tool you're using and how sharp it is, you might be able to go through lots of pages at once. I'm just gonna go through one at a time with this or some of the very thin ones I might be able to go through two at a time. So I'm just gonna work my way through my booklet doing that. Use the template each time so you get your holes in the same place. Okay, so I've put a hole, uh, my five holes through all of my sheets of paper and I've restacked them. I also put the holes in the envelope I was using. Um, this can be a really nice little extra addition to your book. If you put holes through the opening, I don't know if you can see there, I've got my holes all along the spine of the fold on my envelope. And I'm going to bind it with all my pages in my book, which means that my book at the beginning will have a little pocket. So I've got my booklet here. All the pages are lined up on top of one another with my outer cover on the outside. I've got my envelope in there and all the pages stacked up on top of one another. All my holes should go all the way through. I like to use some bulldog clips, so you can use pegs, just to hold the pages together. It can get a little bit fiddly um, if you're trying to hold them all together with your hands whilst you're stitching your pages. When they're all together like this, go back through with whatever tool you were using and just double check that you can get through all those holes, all the way through from the inside to the outside. Be careful of this hand on the back, just be aware where you're poking through to. Make sure the other hand is out of the way. So just double check. All those holes are nicely lined up. I'm going to use this needle to stitch my pages. This is a great one to use because the eye of the needle is not fatter 
than um, the main part of the needle, which means that it can get through the holes easily. You can use a needle that you have um, at home, something quite narrow here is good, but something quite strong. You might have a darning needle that's similar to this. Dig that out. That could be really useful here. If you haven't got anything like that, you can just use a cord that is stiff and sturdy that you can poke through without it. It'll be a little bit more fiddly, but that's absolutely fine. I'm going to use this cord, um, which is sort of a, a very dense, tight string that I'm going to use for this one. You can get official bookbinding cords if you want to and some linen. That's lovely, but you can use um, thicker string. Um, a very strong yarn if you've got one it needs to be quite strong because you'll have to pull it quite tight and um, you can even use ribbon if you want to make reasonably big holes and work them through with a chopstick you can use ribbon and poke them through just have a rummage see what you've you've got about I don't worry about it too much just make sure your holes are nice and big now this is where I wish I had threaded my needle before before now let's try and get this on there we go okay so I've got my needle threaded with my cord if you're using string that's quite frayed, it can be useful to um, put a little bit of tape around the edge just to give you, like you get on a shoelace, just to give you a hard edge that you can poke through. If you've got nice chunky holes, then that'll be fine for this. I'm going to keep the end of my cord and bundled up. I'm not going to cut a piece because I'm not sure exactly how much you'll need and it'll be really frustrating to run out halfway through the stitching and then realise you have to start again or try and fix a new bit on. So I'm going to keep it all attached at the moment. Okay. So here is where we stitch the pages together. We go through a quite specific stitching pattern. First of all, we go through the centre of our pages and pull through. It can be a little bit fiddly to get the needle through the first one because we've got a double amount of cord on the last one. So if you need to open up your holes a little bit, get them a little bit wide. I think I'll need to widen my other ones a little. Then just put your tool back in, have a wiggle. So I've gone through the centre and I'm pulling a nice long bit of cord there. Okay, so I'm through the centre. Next I want to come in on the first hole on the left and come through the centre. There we go. So I've got in, round and out. So you should have a little loop on the back spine that you can give a little tug. Next, I'm going to go to my furthermost left stitch, left hole, and come through. Okay, so I've got a loop here and I've got a loop there. I'm going to come back through this hole here. And this is another reason why your holes need to be quite chunky because you'll need to get each time um, a cord through twice. So come back through. Make sure your loops are reasonably tight, depending on what string or thread you're using. They might be a little bit neater than others. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I've gone through that side. Next, I need to go from this hole on the left, skipping the middle and going through to this one on the right. Okay, so I've come through to this side. I'm now working on the right hand side. So I've come through the middle stitch there and I'm going to go through the outermost right. And pull it. So now I've got a loop on my right. Back through this stitch here in the center of the right hand side. When you've done that, you should have three loops here with a gap. So all we're going to do now is going to go back through the middle stitch from the back to the front to make sure that we have four stitches all along the back. Okay, so pull it tight, make sure you have 
four stitches here and then you've got well it looks like four but you've actually got three because this is one big one so but the equivalent of four gaps being filled here and you can then tie it off so you can just go underneath that stitch tie a knot I'm just going to cut off my excess either side make sure it's nice and tight trim off the excess unclip it and here we go all my pages are bound together I've got my envelope pocket in the front my interesting magazine pages I've just got plain pages misprints bits of prints that I haven't done anything with before so I can now fill this up with notes, sketches, print ideas, to-do lists. And I've got my nice page on the back and then my little envelope flap. If you want a little refresher of the stitching pattern that we're using, I've got this little um, diagram which is slightly confusing to look at. Um, but if you go in the centre hole and you make a figure of eight, one side, all the way over to the other side, figure of eight going in and out, back through the middle, and tie off. We'd love to see any books that you make or anything that you do with your misprints. Please tag us on Instagram or Facebook and um, happy printing!